C4 plant. What exactly is a C4 plant and how we can differentiate it from C3 plants? So, C4 plant or hatch and slack cycle was worked out in a separate group of plants like sugarcane and maize where we found that the fixation of carbon is going to occur entirely different with respect to the C3 plants. Okay. And the genesis of this difference lies on the important thing and that is the Kranz anatomy. So, first of all, let us learn what exactly is a Kranz anatomy. Have a look at this diagram. So, this is the anatomical structure of the leaf you can see there, right. So, this is a bundle seat, right and this is a mesophyll, okay. So, we say there are dimorphic chloroplast or dimorphism. What is the meaning of dimorphism? That there are two different types of chloroplast, the bundle seat chloroplast and the mesophyll, mesophyll chloroplast. Both chloroplast has been assigned a different role in a very simplistic manner if I say that bundle seat chloroplasts are primarily aimed for performing the Calvin cycle and mesophyll cells are primarily concerned with the performing the, the light reaction job. Okay. So, that is why there is somewhat differentiation in the job and thereby making it more and more efficient. Okay. So, this is what we call hatch and slack cycle. Now, have a look at the entire cycle. So, as I told you there are two things one is the mesophyll second is the bundle seed cell right. So, in case of mesophyll what we see that the first CO2 acceptor is going to act as a PEP. Now, it is a different from C3 cycle in case of C3 cycle it was a 5 carbon compound RUBP, but here the phosphoenol pyruvate that is a 3 carbon compound that is going to act as a CO2 acceptor. Okay. So, this accepts CO2 and as a result what we see oxaloacetic acid is going to form. This is a 4 carbon compound, the first stable product and that is why this entire cycle is actually called as a C4 cycle. Now, this oxaloacetic acid gets converted into malic acid okay? and the malic acid is actually being transferred to the bundle seed cell. Right? Now, in the bundle seed cell what happens this malate undergo the decarboxylation process that means there is a 4 carbon compound one CO2 will come out right? and one CO2 will come out as a result the 3 carbon compound pyruvate is actually being formed. Now, this single CO2 is being accepted by RUBP right? and within the bundle seed cell what happens that Calvin cycle will run and eventually form the starch. Now, this pyruvate will again go back to the mesophyll cell. In the mesophyll cell what will happen? The pyruvate will undergo dikinase activity and as a result what will happen that two molecules of AT being utilized and again the CO2 acceptor in the form of PEP is actually be formed. Okay. So, this is how the entire Calvin cycle is being completed. This is how entire hatch and sack cycle is actually being completed. Now, mind it the passage of molecules from mesophyll to bundle cell is restricted to few molecule only. And what are they? The very first, the mallet, the second, the pyruvate, okay. And there is one more, what we call NADPH2, because you know in Calvin cycle NADPH2 is required. And this NADPH2 is actually being formed in the mesophyll cell only. So, once the mesophyll NADPH2 is being formed, these NADPH2 goes to the uh, bundle seed cell, wherein the Calvin cycle is actually being utilized. But in addition to that, there is one more molecule where the uh, passage from mesophyll to bundle seed cell can happen and that is in the form of aspartate. So, there are few plants in which instead of malate the oxaloacetic acid gets converted into aspartate. So, aspartate gets transmitted to the bundle seed cell and here again it gets converted into malate okay? and then rest of the reaction remains the same. So, again malate will be decarboxylated, CO2 will be utilized by the Calvin cycle pyruvate will be formed, pyruvate will again go back to the uh, mesophyll cell where again it will regenerate the RUBP, it will regenerate the PEP that is the CO2 acceptor. Okay? So, this is all about the aspects of the uh, hatch and slack cycle or what we call C4 cycle. Okay?
Now let's talk about the energetics. Now have a look at this. Here what happens? 5 ATP is required. Okay, and 2 NADP is 2. So 5 ATP and 2 NADP is required for the formation of one molecule of carbon dioxide. How the 5 ATP? Because you see, 3 ATP was required in Calvin cycle and 2 activity was required in dikinase. So 3 plus 2 makes 5. And as far as NADH2 requirement is concerned, that remains the same. So in Calvin cycle, the 2 NADPH2 is required. So here also it is the same. Okay. So one molecule of carbohydrate require all together we can say 30 ATP and 12 NADPH2. Okay. This is the most efficient uh, mechanism for the CO2 fixation or rather it is more efficient than C3 cycle. Now why it is more efficient? The reason behind their efficiency lies in the Kranz anatomy. What happens that the Kranz anatomy ensures the complete carboxylation of within the bundle seed cells, there is no oxygen, right? So, it, it goes, it ensures the carboxylase activity thereby more and more fixation, okay, and more and more carbohydrate being formed. The Kranz anatomy is primarily responsible for uh, making it more efficient and due to Kranz anatomy, what happens? The photorespiration is not there, okay. What exactly is the photorespiration? We will discuss about in the next session. So, that is all as far as the Hatch and Slack cycle is concerned. Thank you.